Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we are looking at another mobile base and this is the NE Mobile Base Tri which is this lovely great big thing right here. So this mobile base if I come to the spawn menu comes in at 5184 blocks. So it's a rather big one but it is all set up for survival using no mods and simply the first DLC pack for a little bit of decoration. So let's start by going around the outside and then we'll take a little tour on the inside. At the front here we can see the big old suspension for the wheels all going along and at the very front we've got our spotlights which have been very well hidden there just to break up that front part of the wheels which do look a little bit weak and it look like they could break as soon as you hit a rock. We also have a Gatling gun sitting underneath the cockpit there for you to shoot directly forwards. Now for me I would have liked this Gatling gun to be a little bit higher because it does look like it could potentially damage your own wheels if you wanted to shoot something just over in that direction. But anyway, let's drop down a little bit more and start moving around the side. So we've got lots and lots of wheels on this thing, so you do not have to worry if you lose one or two across your adventure, just bumping into a tree or something and sending it flying. Yes, we can come forwards a little bit more. We can see the digital camouflage going along the edge just above where the wheel suspensions are being connected. We can see some batteries being hidden behind that little yellow sloped block. We've got an ore detector at the front there. Yes, so if I put my HUD on and just put the display on, you can see that it's detecting nickel 91.3 meters away. We can also see some sneaky little oxygen tanks just sitting under there with a connector just holding them together. But of course I'm in creative mode so they have nothing to store in them. Moving across we have a ladder which goes all the way from the ground which you would have to jump and grab hold of which is how you would primarily get into the mobile base. If we take a look there behind it we can see some unfinished blocks just to break up the extra blocky look. I do like that but unfortunately you can't really have that around if you have a mob the builder, a little nano repair bot because they will just repair everything and ruin your design. Moving across we've got a connector for you to either eject stuff out or perhaps connect it up to a small ship if you need refueling or you want to dump resources off to a base. We can see what looks like a refinery sticking out there with the modules on top and as we go further back we can see large cargo containers a bit exposed for combat. A drone could very easily damage them but then again this is more for adventuring than it is for combat. We can see some very good use of some LCD screens there, just with the little warning label on it, I've forgotten what they're called. Yes, as we come all the way around the back, we've got some hydrogen engines. I almost forgot what they were called for a second. But yes, hydrogen engines connected to your cargo container, so this is how you're going to boost yourself along if you're a wee bit heavy to go up a hill and need that extra little bit of power just to get you up and over. Of course, if your cargo container has got disconnected, and we're still connected to the hydrogen tank, it's very possible for them to just bugger off into space. But yes, as we continue along, we got another connector at the very back there. A lot easier to connect up to a base. Say if you had a piston with a connector on it, you could just extend it out over this, connect it up, dump off food resources, refuel and whatnot. Yes, we have a gun there underneath, so we're protected at the very back. As you can see all the way over here, we've got another hydrogen thruster just hidden near those rounded blocks. And then as we come along to the opposite side, we basically have the same story. There are some more cargo containers. There's another refinery, I think. I hope that's a refinery. And the modules are there. On the top, we've got a lot of solar panels. We've got eight solar panels, which is very good. That means we're not going to be running out of power anytime soon, unless it's permanently night for some odd reason. Antenna on top, so you can never lose it. Another gun just to help those pesky drones which fly above you. And we've got some more unfinished blocks just to bridge the gap where the connectors are going to the cargo container. At the back, we've got a little fake antenna made out of an unfinished block. And as we move along there, we've got some blast door edges and a little blast door parts. There's the turret. And then we come over to this. This is like a small landing pad for a very small ship just to land on top of it. Perhaps your little fighters or your friends could just connect up to there and then when you get attacked by a drone you could deploy them instead of wasting ammunition on the turrets. 
We got our bacon there just to display where you are. And uh, there's another wall detector. We've also got these little bridgeways, which I think I did miss off. They are how you get up from the ladder all the way over to the door. And now my favourite part is, of course, going underneath to see if any detail has been added there. Oh, look at that. I did forget about that. There is another hydrogen thruster right there, which is being... Oh god, there's lots of them under there. Yes, let's, let's just take that from the top. So there is a hydrogen thruster there being hidden by some windows. I, oh, I want to call them stairs because that's what I primarily use them for. But yes, they are sloped windows. And as I come underneath, there's even more hydrogen thrusters just to like lift you up. This is mainly just for going up slopes or by going up steep hills and all that. But yes, underneath... Still got some nice detail. We got a small connector there, which is how that hydrogen thruster is being done. And a collector? That can't be a collector under there. That seems a bit silly. I suppose that would be just for ejecting stuff out. Although I've never used it for that. Underneath here, we can see the hydrogen tanks all have different colours. Some of them have the digital camouflage. Some of them have the default skin. But yes, that is it for the outside. And it does look rather fantastic from a distance. I could never make anything like this in survival mode or let alone creator mode. And yes, it is capable for survival mode. You will simply just have to get a projector or something like that and start welding it together. How long it will take you, I do not know. And now it's time to take control of my character. Let's just hop down here and climb up that ladder. So here we go. There is the ladder. We can access it from the ground or you can just jump and connect onto it. So we're just going to climb up here, take a little look around. Those wheels are massive. I always forget how big the wheels are compared to you. You get so used to building big things that you just kind of lose focus on that type of thing. But now we're at the very top. Up we get. We have a small little light there. And we've got a conveyor. Walking around, there's the door to go in. Nothing too much on this side. A bit of a health hazard, actually. You could fall off there and break your leg. God, could you imagine if they added in the arc system where you could break legs and all that? God, that would be horrible in this. <laughs> it would be funny. So going through this door, which has conveniently been opened by me earlier. Let's close that up. We then have the armory lockers or whatever they're called. I've got some lights in here, so I don't need to have this on. Coming across, we have the exact same. And this door will lead us to the opposite side. In we go. Turning around, that's where we drive the ship. So I'll come to that last. Turning around and coming through here, we've got some cryopods for the quick recharge or if you want to freeze your friends in there and maybe defrost them in the future where there's actually flying cars and stuff. We have got programmable blocks, survival kit, we've got a button for the hydrogen engine. Oh yes, I love that thing. We've got another hydrogen engine over there which I believe is also controlled by that. Yep, there we go, we can see all the moving parts. Let's just close that off. We've got an air vent with a half-finished catwalk over the top so we can walk over it and still get the oxygen coming through. Opening up this door and coming up the digital camouflage steel blocks, we can reach the turret on top. The turret on top is what we talked about earlier, and this is how we can connect up, say, a small ship. If I can actually find a small ship. I, I probably have one somewhere. So you could have a small ship just go and connect up to this, so if I just drop that down, boosh. There we go, we now have one fighter on this mobile base. If it had a connector, you could just connect up like that. But I have a landing gear on there, because that was the only one I could find that was suitable for this ship. So yes, you can have two fighters on here. You could probably even get four small fighters if you really wanted to. If you want to budge that one forwards a little bit. And then have another one there. Yes, we just walk around on top of here. We can access the beacon manually. We can even look down here, just spy on your friends or whatever as they go through the area with the programmable blocks. And just walk around. Is that another player? No. Anyway, going back inside. Actually, no, not back inside. We can just... Well, we can't hop up there too well. We can just jump there. Now we can access to these solar panels if you want to repair them manually without using a jetpack. That's always something to think about. You won't always have a jetpack. Going back down here, this is kind of close actually. It looks more closer in first person, but never mind. We can go along to the very front. Now in here is where I just sat. It wasn't the programmable blocks. This is the living area. Close up the doors. 
these are where the DLC blocks are mainly being used. So we have the kitchen, we've got the planter there, so this is your living quarters. A bed to lay on. Then coming through here, we've got our lockers, a toilet, just to sit on. And then coming back around, we've got our little display screen showing you the rover. It's kind of a shame it doesn't show the wheels. Yes, you can sit there and have a little discussion while one person goes and drives. In the cockpit, we have got buttons for the hydrogen thrusters. So if you wanted to get a nice boost long, you can do. We then have number two for the spotlights at the front. Number three, four and five is to manually control the Gatling guns. So there we go. And number six is to control the hydrogen engines if you need that extra piece of power. So say the solar panels were not generating enough power, you can always switch on the hydrogen engine and go. But now it's time to take this thing for a little ride, shall we? So holding forward without the hydrogen engines turned on and hoping that tree doesn't break a wheel. There we go. We're moving very slowly, much as you would kind of expect from a mobile base. Putting the hydrogen engines on, we get quite a big boost of speed. So there we go. And turning off the hydrogen engines, it doesn't really make too much of a difference, does it? We know we can keep moving along like this, turning them off and just turning around. The game is not liking this for some odd reason, I'm not sure what's going on there. Going along we are very slow, stopping with brakes is almost instantly like with all land vehicles. As for turning, so if I was to start turning like this, maybe even put the hydrogen engine on, it's going to be a very long time for you to make a full U-turn and you'll need quite a big area to actually fully turn around, so that's something to bear in mind if you're in a tight area, such as a canyon. But as for that, it's a really nice mobile base, something that I'd really consider using in a survival game if I wanted just to start off with a mobile base, instead of going through the whole issue of you start off with the drop pod, you then have to work yourself up, I'd simply destroy the drop pod, spawn in this and go from there. Yes, it would be a little bit cheating, but it would be a slightly different start and could lead to some unexpected things. So as per usual, the mobile base will be in the description below if you wish to download and try it yourself, and I'll be back with another Space Engineers video some point soon. Oh wow, we, we really just destroyed that rock. That thing is gone, that, the wheels are still going, this thing is like almost immortal. But yes, Bye-bye.